thinking was was to make a painting that I could show her to show her that I have some kind of uh, that I've, you know because we've been married for 14 years and uh, you know after a while after a blue million headaches it's just like oh there's another headache you know so um, I didn't want her to think that I'd lost my sensitivity so I created this painting and say oh well look here's you know and she hated it because you know she said well I don't want to be reminded that I get these things well I can understand that's a defense mechanism, and if you're, you know, chronically ill, I think you could have. But I think, I think you have to accept where you are rather than avoid it, accept it, and then do the best you can within the context of having these headaches. But I realize another defense mechanism is to just kind of refuse that you are what you are, <laughs> and you know, go from day to day. Get migraines. You'll know what I'm talking about when you look at this piece. Um, you know, this is sort of this blank face, you know, like these big gaping eyes, which represents kind of like that, that, that doll, that doll pain where you just can't think. And <clears throat> the lights coming out of the head, that's like that sparking, you know, I can't, you know, that doesn't, none of it really, I think, you know, does it justice, but that just sort of like the blinding, sparking pain in your head. And, uh, you know, I've got, you know, my wife in the bed, and all curled up, and that if you get migraines, you know you spend most of your life in bed, because sleep seems to be one of the few things that sort of like reduces the symptoms. Um, and then there's drugs. I mean, there's all kinds of drugs. And, and granted, they and, and to some degree they work, but it's not enough. You know, it's they still don't. The medical the world still doesn't understand migraines, uh, why they're even caused. I think. Uh, they realize just it's a pressure in the head, you know, your vascular system. Uh, cause, so there's drugs that re restricts the vascular, vascular system, but they don't always work. I, from my standpoint, it looks like about 50% of the time, um, Emetrix being probably the best of the bunch, of the lot. Um, and if you go to an emergency room, you know, you, it's, you know <laughs> it's expensive, and they don't do anything. Um, so... In, Here's another one of my beefs that, you know, if a person is suffering like this and you do not have um, any, you know, and they've done everything they can to resolve, resolve the issue, to find some comfort, and the only thing that, that help, can help them is like a shot of narcotics, you know, <laughs> so after two or three days of, you know, this mind-numbing pain that they can get some relaxation or break the cycle. I, I have no idea, but but why can't you get that? And why can't, does it have to be expensive? And why does it have to be, you know, because we're protecting people from those few people that would abuse that, abuse the system and abuse the drugs. And that's one of my big beefs. Like why, should, why should people that need something have to pay the price of other, you know, of other individuals who don't? It just abused the system. 
that really irritates me. Why can't you make a choice? Why can't you make a choice just to take it, you know? And then if you get out of control, you suffer the consequences. I don't understand why life can't be simple like that. So then I have an angel, like the angel of hope. Um, so you have to have always have hope or else, you know, you, I mean, that's what life's all about is going through it and, and always having that, that carrot hanging out in front of you, a carrot of hope that something can be done to relieve whatever, you know, you're suffering <laughs> at, at the moment, relieve you of whatever your, whatever's bothering you at the moment, whatever suffering you happen to be going through. So you have hope that tomorrow you can fix it or whatever, you know, something, I don't know. But here's this angel, and uh, but it's just like this vague thing, so it's like that vague sort of hope that out in front of you. And um, said, I've written around the outside of the frame, you know, wasted days, wasted nights, because your whole life, I mean, you know, if you think sleeping's wasting your life, then you do a lot more of that, plus just having a headache, so... And as you well know, people that live with this, is you can't plan anything. As a family, you can't plan anything. So you basically kind of have to wait until the person doesn't have a headache and then be there for them so that you can do whatever you need to do at the time. And the burden is on you to sort of take care of things too. As a person that has a headache can't. Or they, if they do, they're doing it with a headache. And it takes a lot of energy just to keep from being a bitch. <laughs> Because if you're chronically ill, you're going to be out of your mind most of the time, I think. So, it's a, it's a, it's another one of my tales of woe and misery. And uh, <laughs> I always I, I try to frame it in some kind of entertaining fashion, you know. <clears throat> so, but everybody, you know, so you can identify without being like <laughs> crushed by the woe and misery. So. Uh, Perhaps I will play delightful and silly music through this presentation. <laughs> oh, man. So, anyway, that's the migraine painting. Oh, I've got a headache now. <laughs> oh, man. But it's not as bad as a migraine. <laughs>